Welcome to this Monday morning message. We're so fortunate to have Pastor George Pyakong lead us in the message today. Pastor George is the pastor of the International Christian Fellowship, the Filipino congregation which meets at our church. We enjoy a beautiful fellowship with that congregation. Pastor George and his wife, Eileen, have three extremely bright children and dedicated as well. That would be Hesed, George III, and Isaac. Pastor George, we hear you gladly today. The story is told about a little girl who was invited for dinner at the home of her friend. The vegetable was buttered broccoli, and the mother asked if she liked it. The child replied very politely, oh yes, I love it. But when the bowl of broccoli was passed, she declined to take any. The hostess said, I thought you said you loved broccoli. The girl replied sweetly, oh yes, ma'am, I do, but not enough to eat it. In the Bible, Mark tells of a story of a grown-up who came to Jesus and asked, which of the commandment is most important of all? Before the time of Jesus, Israel's religious leaders made a catalog of all the commandments found in the book of Moses. They found 613 commandments from Genesis through Deuteronomy. Of the 613 commandments, 365 are prohibitions and 248 were positive commandments. The rabbis of Israel classified the commandments into heavy and light. The scribe who came to Jesus wanted to know which commandment supersedes everything and is binding on all humanity. He wanted to know which commandment sums up all the commandments. In other words, he wanted to know what is the greatest of all the commandments, the unifying principle behind what is prohibited and permitted. This is a legitimate and good question. I am pretty much like this scribe. I mean, if there is one commandment that I can obey instead of 613, and compliance to one makes me right with God, sign me up. This is not a trick question. It's legitimate. Of all the commandments, which is the most important? And to this, the Lord Jesus Christ replied, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. In essence, Jesus said, when you love God with all your being and love him from your heart, you fulfill the first four of the Ten Commandments. By loving God, you get rid of idols, honors his name, and keeps the Sabbath. Jesus gave the second commandment. The second is this, he said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Again, by loving your neighbor, you fulfill honoring of parents and the prohibitions on murder, on adultery, on stealing, on bearing false witness, and on covetousness. The scribe was so delighted to hear Jesus' theological affirmation, there is one God and his ethical admonition to love God with all your being, heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus gave two commandments. Loving God wholeheartedly is the priority. Loving your neighbor as we love ourselves is proper. The teacher gave two inseparable commandments. We cannot focus on the first at the expense of the second. Yes, the first is the priority, but the second is the gauge. Through the history of the church, the preoccupation of many Christians is in the fulfillment of the first of the greatest commandment. The assumption is, obedience to the first commandment takes care of the second commandment. But this is not always the case. Some people think that isolating themselves from people insulate them from the pollution of the world. We know that this is not true especially in the advent of technology. We are called to fulfill the first commandment in the realm of the second. John the Beloved, 
later explains that we cannot say we love the invisible God, yet despise our visible brothers. That is in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. We can truly love God when we love our neighbors. The question is, do we love God enough to love our neighbors? Today, more than ever, our city needs Christians who love God enough to love their neighbors. Our polarized, confused, hurting, and angry society needs Christians who love God enough to be instruments of healing and reconciliation. In the pursuit of justice and the rule of law, we need to love God enough to love our neighbors. Think about it.